The Cowboys hosting the Green Bay Packers in the NFC wild card round. The two seed against the seven seed. Dallas trying to avenge some uh, Packers playoff history trauma that they might have. They are seven-point favorites at home. That is a sizable spread, second largest of the week of any playoff game. Now, the Cowboys injury report, again, as of filming, looks pretty good. Tyler Smith, limited the first two days of practice, barring a setback, going to be good to go with his uh, plantar fascia issue. Stephon Gilmore put the harness on on his shoulder for Thursday. He should be good to go. Hankins, Hooker, Armstrong, all out there, at least in a limited sense, practicing. They are a bit banged up. They'll be good to go. Compared to Green Bay with Jair Alexander kind of uncertain, A.J. Dillon, Elton Jenkins a bit nicked up, Dallas is in, is in much better health. Now, we will be live, of course we will, for the Cowboys-Packers playoff game. Do not miss out. Hit that sub button right now, youtube.com slash at Cowboys TV. Let's talk matchups to watch here. Number one is Jordan Love against this, this Cowboys defense. And I've said before, and I stand by it, I believe that Green Bay, going from Hall of Fame quarterback to Hall of Fame quarterback to really good QB, is a war crime and should be punished by the rules of the G Geneva Convention. And I have very bad news to report. <laughs> Jordan Love's really good quarterback. Uh, the numbers this year, very impressive. Uh, one of the, some of the most passed touchdowns behind your guy and Dak Prescott. Love was a tough eval for me coming out of Utah State. Uh, I liked, a, or Nevada, excuse me. I, I liked a lot of what I saw his pre-draft year. His, his sophomore year with, sorry, it was Utah State, my bad. I was like, ooh, this guy's, this guy's got a lot of talent. I like him. Then he wasn't as good his final season. Uh, and I'm like, you know what? Maybe he's not the guy. I was surprised Green Bay took him. The back half of the year, Jordan Love has significantly stepped up his play. Expected points added again. Overall health of your passing offense since week nine. Brock Purdy's one. It's the Shanahan offense boost. Dak Prescott is two. Jordan Love is three. Matthew Stafford is four. And Lamar Jackson is five. All playoff quarterbacks, all guys outside of Stafford and to a certain extent Love, you know, Purdy, Prescott, Lamar with Josh Allen maybe mixed in there, probably going to be your MVP front runners and they're, they're all going to get votes. Jordan Love has played almost as good as both of those guys since week nine. We're, we're into the whole, you know, post bye week change for Dak. One week later, Love's numbers are very good. He is the one I'd be a little bit more worried about this week. So what is your confidence level in beating the Green Bay Packers? Scale it for me from one to ten. It's the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. One on the low end, ten on the high end. The number two matchup is, is, is third downs, period. Again, we will look at the since week nine numbers. I did have to drop the, uh, the, the uh, total dropbacks number because Purdy didn't play very many because it's the Niners and they're loaded. Purdy's one. Dak is two and Love is three. How about that? Now, Dak has played an MVP clip on third down. He has saved the offenses nonstop. So is Love. And again... The common thread, knowing, of course, that EPA, you get more of a boost on third downs because they're more impactful because if you get the first down, you get a, a big boost. If you don't get the first down, drives over. That's why it's the money down, right? Both of those quarterbacks' third down EPA per play is a boost over their regular EPA, which is not unusual for the top-tier quarterbacks. Jordan Love is a very talented player who does have some areas he's not necessarily at his best, which we will get into here in a little bit. All right, pick a quarterback here for me. JL for Jordan Love, DP for Dak Prescott. I know the answer. What do you guys think? Go vote in the comments section. I think your secondary concern is stopping Aaron Jones, and I would expect Green Bay to try to run the football a lot. Some advanced metrics here for Aaron Jones, and I want you to just remember these a little bit. He's 17th in yards per carry. He's 11th in EPA per rush, second in success rate. So again, yards per carry, pretty straightforward. EPA per rush, these are all per uh, our friends over at uh, Summer Sports, by the way. Second in success rate, did your play lead to good results on the drive? Was it first and, was it, you know, third and two to get the first down? Explosive play rate, he's not very high. He doesn't bust a, a bunch of big runs, but he gets consistent 
solid yardage where your defense has struggled in stopping the run. He's 20th in yards after contact. So not an elite tackle breaker, but they block it up pretty well, and he does a really good job of getting what's blocked for him and a little bit more. We will come back to the offense and the defense here, but today's show is made possible by game time. If you're trying to go to this Cowboys-Packers game, it's a whiteout, by the way. You have to use game time. You can find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for this game and, of course, other events, baseball when it comes back, basketball, concerts, theaters, and more. I love their zone deals. You pick the section, and game time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. The game time guarantee means you will always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So download the game time app, create your account, and use code CowboysChat for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply, but create your account at GameTime.co, download the app, and use code C-O-W-B-O-Y-S-C-H-A-T for $20 off your first purchase. Links in the comments and the description. Number four matchup is the Cowboys' offense against Green Bay on early downs. And not from a, like, a results perspective necessarily, but from more of a philosophical perspective. Again, per summer sports, they, they, they had a great playoff guide that they sent out. The Cowboys' success results, their rankings on early downs, they are the fifth best offense when they throw it on early downs from a results perspective. They are the 19th best offense when running the ball on early downs. Let Dak deal. It's not that hard. The Packers' defensive rankings are not very good, by the way. They've actually got a little bit worse down the stretch here. Uh, they're 23rd in both total EPA and pass EPA per play and slightly better in the run play. So when you're playing equally bad elements on, off, on defense, where they're bad against the pass and bad against the run, you should probably do the things that you are better at. Let Dak deal and let Lamb loose. Those two players are how you are going to have playoff success. Ride or die with those two. Number five is Micah Parsons against the refs. And Micah, oh, he's complaining about the officials. A, they suck. They are always bad at their jobs across the board for all NFL teams. But I'm actually very serious here because it has been 11 games since Micah Parsons got a holding call. No matter what he does, the refs aren't throwing it. If I were Green Bay, I were Matt LaFleur, do you know what I would do? I'd tell my offensive line, guys, until they call it, hold the hell out of Micah Parsons. Because make the refs call it. And if they call it, okay, then adjust. Because right now they're not calling it. No matter what it is, they are not calling it. And this is important to remember. For the Packers and Jordan Love, when blitzed, his numbers, not that different than Dak Prescott. That's the mark of a good quarterback, by the way. 65% completion uh, percentage, 7.1 yards per attempt, 10 touchdowns, 1 inter inter Exception. Now, that's when blitzed. When under pressure, smaller rate than when he's been blitzed, by the way, 49% completion rate, 6.8 yards per attempt, nine touchdowns, four interceptions. Jordan Love, like pretty much all quarterbacks, is not nearly as good under pressure, but he is good against the blitz. So if you want to harass who I think is on the fringe of becoming a top 10 NFL quarterback right now in, in Love, you have to get home with four. Good thing you're built to do that. So will Micah Parsons get a holding call this week? Y for yes, N for no. Go ahead and sound off with your honest predictions in the comments section. Let's go to players to watch here. How about Tony Pollard, the running back? Remember we gave you those Aaron Jones stats, 17, 11, 2, 55, and 20? It, obviously, Tony Pollard, not nearly as good in yards per carry compared to Aaron Jones. Not remotely as close in EPA per rush. He is far behind in success rate, almost 20 on each. He is a little bit better in explosive play rate. He's actually 18th in yards after contact. In fact, since week nine, that first, these first stats, summer sports, these second ones, PFF, he's 15th in yards after contact on average. He's number three in forced missed tackles, and he's up to tied for 17th in 10 plus yard runs, which is a volumes that 
not a great stat, and he's third in run grade. The running game woes have predominantly been because the scheme is not very good and the blocking has not nearly been good enough. Pollard is actually doing a great job of making guys miss. And he's, his numbers are low, not blocked up very well. I fear that's not going to change in this playoff run, though. Number four player to watch is the corners. Some great numbers here, again, from uh, Summer Sports. The Cowboys' defensive coverage rates entering the postseason. Nobody plays more cover one than Dallas does. 55.7% of their snaps are in cover one. Cover two, it's at 15%. They're 21st. Cover three, which of course was once the Dan Quinn staple, actually second to last in cover three rates. Cover four, they're down there at 29%. And they only play cover two man about 4.9% of the time. They like to bring some fives and they, they like to have kind of a, a, a robber look as well with one of those safeties kind of lurking over the middle of the field. So it's going to be a, a lot of man coverage. We know that this, this Cowboys team runs, you know, around 60% man. It's the highest rate in football. The Packers have some dudes at, at wide receiver, assuming, of course, they are healthy. Christian Watson uh, has been a bit nicked up uh, as of late along the, the uh, receiving core. He's got that hamstring. It's been lingering for him. Uh, Romeo Dubs has shown some promise. Jaden Reed is a very gadgety player. They'll use him on jet sweeps where, oh, you've struggled with it. The Packers like to run man. They're a top 10 motion team. Or they like to run motion. They're top 10 in that rate. They'll do that with Jaden Reed. Corners got to be on their game if the Cowboys are going to stick with playing a bunch of man against a potent Packers passing attack. Say that one three times fast. Or five times fast, whatever. Number three is Jake Ferguson. Uh, you can look at the advanced numbers of like how defenses get beat. Do you know who is dead last in the NFL at stopping those seam shots, those middle of the field throws that Dak Prescott and Jake Ferguson have hit on so many times? It's the Green Bay Packers. This should be a game in which you attack the middle of the field, that spine of the Packers defense with Jake Ferguson in particular. You, you throw it behind Quay Walker, behind Devondre Campbell. You pick on the safety room. It's not that great in Green Bay. And this could very well be a big Fergie game. I think this is a game in which you attack that spine and you let Dak deal and you make Ferguson your number two, number three wide or target behind Lamb. And, of course, Brandon Cook's involved there as well. How do you think? Who do you think? Excuse me. Not how do you think? Scores the first touchdown for the Cowboys against Green Bay. Sound off in the comment section right now. Number two player is Donovan Wilson. And if you've been subscribed and watched the show for a while, you know there was a point this year I'm like, your safeties aren't playing well. They have to play better. Nobody has answered the call. Eh, Jordan Lewis probably has too, but he's not a safety. He's done some great stuff in the box, to be clear. No one has answered that call and that challenged like Donovan Wilson has. Look at this split. The first seven games, he missed two games with injury, by the way. 32 tackles, one splash play, it was the TFL. The, the last eight games, he's got 56 tackles, significantly more, still just the one TFL, but two interceptions, three pass breakups, and two forced fumbles. And the last couple weeks in particular, how many times has it been Donovan Wilson big play? Been a lot of those out there for the Cowboys. Jordan Lewis made some big ones too. The play of Donovan Wilson, who Dan Quinn loves, you, you needed to be more physical coming out of, the, uh, of the, uh, the Bills game. Donovan Wilson, who has answered that call most of all. Final player to watch is Terrence Steele. Packers got some pass rushers. Sean Gary got paid. He's a really good one, by the way. I need a better version of Steele. It's been over a year now since that brutal knee injury. Return to play was awesome. Return of performance has not yet come for Steele. His numbers are way down, I should say, across the board. More sacks, more hits, more hurries. Not as good as a run blocker. I, the Cowboys have run less duo stuff. It's been a huge issue in their running game this year. The poor play of Steele also playing a big factor uh, in, in that area. So you need Steele to play better against Green Bay.